Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let me share with you how I learned how to meditate. When I was in my 20s, I worked on ships as a cook. This one particular ship was 30 guys and two cooks. And one day I needed to ask one of the deckhands a question. So I ran down the stairs, burst into his stateroom, and it was dark in there. There was one candle burning on a little table. And I said, ooh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. And he said, no, that's cool. I'm just meditating. What do you want? And a couple of days later, I thought, I'm going to ask him how to meditate. So I said, well, you teach me how to meditate. And he said, sure, it's easy. You just look at a candle or maybe an orange and let your mind empty. And so I tried that and I hated it. I couldn't empty my mind. I was just sitting there thinking, 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 staring at a candle. My eyes started to water and didn't work for me. So now I'm in my 20s thinking that I don't like to meditate. Fast forward to my 30s, I'm learning how to be a real estate agent in Seattle. And the manager of the office is teaching a visualization meditation class. It's three weekends, it's at her house, five or six students. She has a cozy room for us to sit down, there's blankets and pillows, get into a comfortable position, she says. I'm gonna take you into an imaginary world. And we went down some stairs and we went down through a path in the woods and we went down another set of stairs and at the bottom of the stairs was a meadow and beyond the meadow was water. And in the meadow, there was a man and a woman, they were your spirit guides. There was a house, it was your own special house. You could walk inside. There was next to the house, there was a big screen that you could project things on with your imagination. And somewhere in one of those staircases was an elevator you could go into and talk to anyone. This was really fun class. And after each meditation, she would say, what did you see? What did you get? And the other students would say, oh, I went here and I did this. And I said, I don't remember, I fell asleep. <laughs> and finally she said, all right, everyone get comfortable, except Elisa, you need to sit up. I still use that meditation that she taught us even now. And I use it mainly to fall asleep. It's a great way to fall asleep. Fast forward into, now I'm in my 50s and I meet a woman at a dinner party. And she's this kind of grumpy curmudgeon of a woman. She's kind of short and stocky. And at the dinner table, I hear she, she teaches meditation and someone says, Lee, would you please sing for us? And she opened her mouth and the most beautiful sound came out. I thought I was at the opera. And I looked around and I thought, I think some glass might break. <laughs> it was so powerful. Anyway, I then fell in love with this curmudgeon of a woman. And I asked her later, would you teach me how to meditate? And she said, yes. So I went to her house and sat in a healing room, which was always a little bit cold. <laughs> she had a particular way that she wanted me to sit in a hard chair with my back straight, my feet touching the ground. And she said, this is what you do to get ready. Imagine energy coming into the top of your head, going down the back of your spine, swirling around in your hip area, coming back up, down your arms and out your hands. Do that three times. Okay, now imagine energy coming down through the top of your head, down your spine, swirling around by your hips, going down through your legs, through your feet, 10 feet into the ground. Now, do that three times. Now, put your tongue at the tip of the top of your mouth behind your teeth. And while you're doing that, imagine the energy coming down through your head, down through your spine, swirling around in your hip areas, coming back over the back, into your mouth, and then up, back down your back, through your spine, into the ground 10 feet. Do that three times, and then just sit. And we would sit in silence for 10 or sometimes 20 minutes. And she said, go do that 10 or 20 minutes. And she gave me a book to read. One day I called her and I said, Lee, I meditated at night right before I went to sleep and I couldn't sleep at all. 
I was just laying there awake all night. And she yelled at me. <laughs> she said, Delisa, meditation is not for sleeping. Meditation is for being awake. So after that, I decided I better meditate in the morning. Now, the next thing I learned about meditation was 10 years after that. And my daughter called and said, there's a guy coming into town and he's doing a talk at East West Books. His name is Light Watkins and he's written a book about meditation. So two hours later, I found myself listening to this man talk. And he was talking about his meditation teacher where he loved meditating when he finally got meditation. He said, I just wanted to be in this man's presence because sitting with him and learning about meditation just felt so amazing. I wanted to be next to him. And I thought to myself, as Light was talking, that's how I feel about you. You're cool. Light's book changed my mind about meditation because the main thing he says in there that really clicked with me was there's no wrong way to meditate. In fact, the way you should sit is the way you sit while you're binge watching television. So I persevered in my meditation practice. And then I learned how to teach meditation. I now teach meditation. And sometimes I remember to meditate. I, I, just, I have to say I don't meditate every day up until now. And this is what my favorite minister says about meditation. Kathy Ann Lewis from CSL Seattle says this. When I'm praying, she says, I'm talking to God. When I meditate, I'm listening.